Apex Legends. I've now played this game for almost 2,000 hours. Was it worth it? Do I regret it? Do I even like the game? The answer to that is a resounding yes, but with a big star on the side of it. Apex Legends is one of the most successful games of all time. The prime Apex experience is suffering, die, suffering, die, suffering, die, and then suddenly, after like six games, you realize like, oh, hang on a minute, we're doing all right here. And it does genuinely make that one game where you do okay so much better. It's that contrast between suffering horribleness and, oh wait, we're doing okay, this is kind of fun now. That is the Apex formula. And I think it's a very powerful formula. It's the Souls formula, actually. To die, to die, to die, to die, to die, and then suddenly you beat the boss and you're like, oh shit, I did it, you know? It's that contrast that makes it so valuable to people. But I think the reason it's so successful is because you have one of those games where you pop off, you do okay, and you're hooked because it feels so fucking good. At its best, the pure excitement that this game gives you, unparalleled. No other game can compete. Apex Legends has a very high time to kill. Some people hate it, I think it's great. In a battle royale, dying means going back to the lobby, searching for another game, joining the game, picking a character, landing, looting, and then finally you can play the game and get back to fighting. That is a huge time penalty for each death. When you die, it's not because some guy, oh, shot you in the face with one bullet. No, in this game, it's because they've emptied their entire gun into you, reloaded, and then emptied another mag into you. Then they've got to put another mag into you while you're downed, and then kill both of your teammates too, so you can't be respawned. You can survive quite a lot of shit. Put simply, you take a lot of killing to be killed. That's fair. High time to kill is better in my opinion because the punishment for dying in this game is so high, which makes games way more tense too. Now because after losing a fight, you have to refind a game, the battle royale mode is actually a very bad way of practicing fighting. It's better to play a mode where you instantly respawn. So instead of fight, new lobby, landing, looting, fight, it becomes fight, respawn, fight. And then you end up getting way more practice in for the time you're playing. The gameplay of Apex Legends is to such an incredibly high standard that it will ruin all other games for you. Everything is so polished because if there's ever anything that is slightly annoying, people will complain about it until it's gone. After years of being tempered like that, by community whining. Everything becomes very polished. The only issue is every time they fix one bug, three more fucking things break. And that happens every single time. Anyone who's played Apex Legends for any length of time and then has gone on to play a different game and has tried to slide down a hill has most likely been very disappointed because for some reason it's not common to be able to slide down hills the way you can in Apex Legends. This game came out in 2019 and has just sat leagues above other games that entire time. Let me slide down hills. But the thing about Apex is that they are constantly adding new shit, which to me, when I first started playing Apex, that blew my mind that they would add new shit all the time. I'm someone who came from Team Fortress 2. I'm not used to that shit at all. You ever see the meme of the guy and he's drowning? And as the guy's drowning, he puts his hand out of the water, reaching for help, and someone gives him a high five. For Valve, they wouldn't even give you the high five. That game is so fucking dead when it comes to updates. Every so often, the community will just kick off and say, please fix the fucking game. And Valve always say, no. <laughs> like, that's all the interaction that Team Fortress 2 gets from Valve. You know, that's what I'm used to. Whereas with Apex, there's constant updates every three months. Constant new legends, constant exciting glitches to make the game kind of unplayable. For example, this season, for half the season, Valk was unplayable. You could not play the character. You could use her chat once, and then that was it. You're now just a shitty character with a big hitbox and a giant wings on your back, and an ult that nobody even needs to use anymore because there's a deployable jump tower. It's also funny how some of the most overpowered characters Characters just go completely unplayed until popular streamers start playing them and then suddenly everyone wants to play them despite those characters receiving no changes whatsoever for season after season imagine there was a character with an ability that was just you don't get to shoot me but I get to shoot you also I get a damage boost that would be fucking stupid, right? Except that is already a character. Her name is Rampart. Every single legend in this game has some kind of appeal to them. There's no legend where I'm like, I have no idea why anyone plays this guy. That said, I do think they should delete Mirage. Mirage is the most annoying character ever. It's not even good, is the thing. For a while, I made my username 
Respawn, please delete Mirage, just to express my feelings about him. Uh, but my teammates kept thinking that they were really funny and picking Mirage just to spite me. And it was actually throwing so many games where instead of having actually a, actually good abilities that I can rely on, they would just throw out dog shit clones that don't even fool anyone. And so having that be my username was throwing so many games that I had to change it. But my point is every legend has some appeal to them. Even Mirage, I understand why people play him, I just find him annoying and I want him gone. Apex is funny because it feels dirty to put money into this game. Like you're committing some taboo, like cannibalism or something. It is a free game, and so it makes sense that they, they need to monetize it. They can't just, you know, give people cool shit for free. It makes perfect sense. But I'm just saying, the feeling of guilt that the game gives you, I, I just think it was an interesting marketing strategy to put that in the player's head. I don't really spend that much money. A good way of not spending money on this game is to not have any fucking money to spend in the first place. That's my strategy. My advice for Respawn would be, if they want to make more money, make some skins that don't actually make me chunder just from looking at them. Oh sorry, I know you've put a bunch of money into the game, but you haven't put the correct currency into the game, so you're gonna have to put even more money into the game if you want this specific uh, reskin. Sorry bud. Listen, I don't make the rules, I just make the coins that you have to spend all your fucking money on. The game always has these colossal issues facing it that require innovation and clever ideas in order to fix. But the only innovation this game sees is how to squeeze more money out of its player base. Which honestly, they do really well at. Heirlooms, for example, are the coolest fucking things ever. You either have to get incredibly lucky, spend a ton of money, or just play the game for 1.4 thousand hours like I did in order to get one. But what are some of these colossal issues facing the game? Well at the moment, hackers, or cheaters, they're not hackers. Cheaters in this game are fucking crazy. They've been going pretty wild lately. Oh, I'm just doing it to feed my family. Your family is a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Stop cheating. Oh, you might be asking how cheating makes money. What they do is they'll get cool looking badges and sell the account with those badges and then people can brag, oh, look at this, I got the 20 badge. And the people who buy those accounts are even bigger losers than the actual cheaters themselves. Cheaters in this game just don't give a fuck. Because the game's free, there's no barrier to entry, so you can just, whenever you get banned, you can just make a new account anyway. And so you see some crazy shit from cheaters, just headshotting you across the map. I remember at one point there was like akimbo guns. It was just like the most crazy cheats ever. At least that's funny. This is your last call for liftoff. Dance. Until recently, I've played zero attention to this game and haven't played for a couple seasons. But even when I wasn't playing, I could still tell you with 100% accuracy the state of Ranked. Fucked. I played for years and it was never not fucked. Remember that season where people were getting prayed without firing a single shot? Even times when people praised Respawn for fixing ranked, I would still constantly run into Predator 3 stacks at ranks that do not need Predator 3 stacks running through them. When the season resets, Preds have to climb through the lower ranks as well. That makes sense, that's not what I'm talking about here. The big problem with this game is that it requires 60 players to start. That is a shit ton of people, so inevitably you're going to have to blend some people of different skilled lobbies together in order to actually start a game sometimes. Especially if you're playing outside of peak times. If you play at like 4am, 5am, 6am, if you're really a degenerate like me, it's going to be Preds. It doesn't matter if you're playing in fucking wood, you're going to have Preds in your lobby. Which is great if you're a Pred, running around, shitting all over people way below your skill level, but it's not so fun when you're a single dad with a ton of responsibilities who can only play Apex for three minutes a night, which, which apparently is like half the community if, if you read Reddit. Listen, single dads, if you play during peak times on well-populated servers, you'll be fine. In most games, new players are quite humble. They'll ask for advice, they understand they don't know what they're doing, they're very thankful when you do give them help. In Apex, the new players, the bad players, they tend to also be the most horrible bastard players ever. Say hello at the start of a game, teammate says nothing. Teammate runs in solo and dies to a full squad. Oh, suddenly his mic has started working. You see people in real time win Olympic gold medals in mental gymnastics as they find ways to blame you for them being shit and missing all their shots. A lot of online games have like quite young audiences. I think Apex is a little bit different where, at least in EU, it's not like 
you know, 13-year-old kids telling you to kill yourself. It's like 30-year-old Russian men. So it's like, it's definitely a different vibe. The audience, or at least the fan base in Apex Legends, it definitely feels just a little bit older, a little bit more mature. It's very nice that they give you loot boxes for free, but I have never played a game with more boring loot boxes. Yes, getting an heirloom is fucking hype, but 99% of the time it's just grey grey blue, grey grey blue, grey grey blue. No shit, grey grey blue, I can't believe it. Grey grey purple, oh shit. And then you get an ugly skin for a character you don't even use, or even better, a fucking hollow spray. A weapon charm, oh shit. The badges that they give away, nobody gives a fuck about. I don't know why they keep giving out the badges. Same with the hollow sprays. They keep fucking up all the loot crates with hollow sprays. You see a purple and you're like, oh, finally a purple after all these greys, and it's a fucking hollow spray. When was the last time you played the game and you saw a hollow spray in game? You never see them. Nobody likes them. Stop giving them away. There's no chance in hell that Apex would ever do this, but in Team Fortress 2, you could have any spray you wanted. It was pretty fucking wild, but it was very funny too. Marking my territory. <laughs> Bird drop in here. If I feel it like lands on you, here, here it's good luck. It's the only spray people use. Apex Legends, more than any other game I've played, is exciting. When you've been shitting up the venue again and again and again and you're miserable and you're contemplating suicide and then suddenly, oh shit, you realise you're in the last ring and you've got a bunch of damage, bunch of kills, my heart starts fucking racing. I'm like, oh shit, oh shit, here we go, oh shit, this is it, I am him. It's a feeling that just no other multiplayer game really provides. Because you know if you if you die, you're going back to the lobby. In life, in order to get the highest highs, you need the lowest lows. And in Apex Legends, there's a lot of lowest lows, but it's also got some of the highest highs too. So do I hate the game? Yeah. But do I actually love the game? Yeah.